Happy Pride, beautiful people. So today I have my finale for the Rainbow Pride Project pan. I know it's been a long, long time since I did an update for this project and I'm really sorry. The truth is this was an extra project I added on because I loved the concept so much and I just was not feeling that great about the progress I had made. But progress is progress and don't ever forget that. All right, so let's just get started. So to recap, I had chosen eight products based on the original colors of the pride flag. So the first category or color is hot pink and I chose a lip balm from Nivea. This is a lip butter. It's in a raspberry rose kiss and I have almost finished this. I don't have a whole lot left in terms of lip balm. I've definitely used this a lot. It's really, really thick, but it's very moisturizing. So I ended up really liking it. Plus it's a combination of two of my absolute favorite things, raspberries and roses. I just can't go wrong with that combination. And really, even though I didn't finish it, I do think using this much, hitting this much pan, is quite a success in my book. For red, I chose an eyeshadow from the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. I chose specifically the shade Red Ochre. And I hit pan on this guy too. I've talked about this whole palette, as you can see all the pan in it, in my Project Pan Porn update because the formula is so soft, it's incredibly easy to hit pan on. So it ended up not being that much of a challenge, but I really love the shadow. What I really love about Red Ochre is that it can be really dramatic and sort of grungy. You can smudge it all over your eye or it can be fairly neutral if you blend it out just a little bit in like the outer corner or you dust a light bit of it in the crease, it doesn't stand out as much and it's more neutral as opposed to very heavy. And of course, you know me, I love to go heavy and I love grungy 90s vibes. So Red Ochre is a terrific shade for that. If you have this palette and you're stuck on ways to use it, just go full grunge with it. It's so much fun and it looks so cool. For orange, I chose this Maybelline color tattoo in Fierce and Tangy. I'm decluttering this. I really dislike most cream eyeshadows. And where this one had dried out and I tried to breathe new life into it by mixing an oil into it, it just didn't end up working. It was too fussy for me to deal with. The oil made it softer but it also made it more slippery, so it didn't really stay on my lid that well. I would set it with orange shadows and it was just, it was just too much work for very little payoff. So I am going to get rid of this. For yellow, I had used one of these Stila smudge sticks in Canary. So it was a yellow eyeliner, but I finished that as of my last update, so I don't have that to show or talk about anymore. If you want information about that one, I would suggest checking out my last update. For green, I chose this concealer from NYX. Obviously, this is a green concealer, and I've made a lot of good progress on this. There's a substantial amount of pan showing now. I use this every day to help color correct some of my redness, although usually I only use it on my forehead because I have psoriasis that can get really red and irritated there, but I will use it on a few other spots on my face. I'm not crazy about this. I find that it does an okay job of covering up my redness, but it really just, it works best when I can pile layer upon layer of it on. And that works when I've got like six high powered lights around me, but not so much for day to day life. Like it just looks unnatural. Like I've got too much too many layers on my face. Like it's great for filming and not so much for day to day life. So I do have my eye on something else that I want to try after I finish this one. So I will continue to work away on this and hopefully I will have it finished before too long. For turquoise, I chose this mascara from the Sephora brand. This is the V is for volume mascara in turquoise. And I really like this mascara. I really like this formula. I do find it does give my lashes a lot of volume and fullness. I didn't use this a whole lot because it's so unique. Really like black or brown mascara is 
good for most looks um, but I would use it on my lower lashes more than my upper but I still have I'd say quite a bit of this mascara left so hopefully I will still be able to get a little bit more usage out of it uh, if you guys have a problem with getting colored mascara to show up on your lashes I would highly recommend a white lash primer it's something that seems so obvious but it really does work so I thought that I would share that little tip with you guys in case you wanted to try some of these colorful mascaras or you might have some that just don't work for you a white lash primer pretty much every brand has them these days from drugstore to super high end and they work with your regular mascara as well to really give you like that extra oomph. I wear a lash primer almost every day just because it helps um, my lashes look a little bit fuller because I don't wear falsies daily. I just thought that might be helpful for someone because I know sometimes the darker colored mascara can be hard to distinguish on your lashes and the white lash primer really does help. For indigo I chose another eyeshadow. I chose Echo from the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loco Remix palette. As you can see I really did not use that eyeshadow a whole lot. I just I have a really hard time at using dark glittery shadows. I find that they just the glitter doesn't work the way I want it to. I just get a lot of fallout. I just find it super messy. I don't know, dark glitter shadows of all colors. I have a really hard time working with them. Um, so if you guys happen to really like dark glittery shadows, let me know how you use it. Like what do you use to apply it to your lid? Do you just pack it all over your lid? Do you use it on a certain section? Let me know, please, please, please. And lastly, for violet, I chose this highlighter from ColourPop in Over the Moon. You can't tell me that this isn't the prettiest highlighter you have ever seen. This is one of those products that just looking at it makes me smile. I mean, just, just swatching it, it makes me so happy. All that iridescent glitter and shimmer in there. It's just such a cool, fantastic product. It's one of those things that just makes me really love makeup. It's not an everyday kind of highlight because again, it's such a standout. I find whenever I wear that highlight, so many people stop and ask me what it is because it's so different. You don't see anybody wearing a highlight like that. It's just, it, it, see, I'm just so happy talking about it because it's just one of those products that I love. So I have used this a fair amount. Like I can see a decent amount of pan. It's just one of, it's one of my favorite makeup products that I own just for the way that it makes me feel. And that's it. That's all she wrote. I didn't finish everything. In fact, it was pretty far from it, but I still really loved this project. I really loved using these products. It was a good project for me to do. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I really would like to do this yearly because I think this is just such an important project. So hats off to Hella and Mimi for coming up with this project. This has been one of my favorite project pans I have ever ever done um, and I wanted to thank you guys so so much for all of your love and all of your support sometimes YouTube can be a pretty scary place and sometimes you feel like you say too much and I just want to thank you guys for all of the love and the support that you've shown me not only in this video and this particular project but just in general it really means a lot so thank you guys so so much for watching I really appreciate your time today and I do hope I will see you in my next video so bye for now